If you keep small fish or breed them, raising and feeding brine shrimp should be a tool in your toolbox. I'm going to show you the cheap and simple brine shrimp hatchery I've used to raise brine shrimp to feed all my fish. You'll need an empty 28 ounce can, a one liter bottle, box cutters or scissors, scotch tape, airline tubing, a silicone straw, small air pump, sea salt, baking soda, cutting board, and brine shrimp eggs. Cut the bottle using scissors or box cutters just before the bottom of the bottle narrows. This bottle had a bit of a seam I used as a guide. The bottle will sit inside the empty can to hold it upright. Then choose a length of tubing that will work for you depending on where you have your hatchery set up. I had two diameters of tubing that would have fit inside my straw, though I chose the 3 16 inches because it happened to be a longer piece. I used scotch tape to tape it in place. Fill up your bottle with warm water and put in about 3 quarter tablespoons of sea salt. Make sure the salt has no additives such as iodine. I also mix in about 1 quarter teaspoon of baking soda to regulate the pH of the water since my water is slightly lower than pH of 7. Mix it all together until it dissolves and then you'll be ready to add your brine shrimp. I use brine shrimp from aquarium co-op that I store in the freezer but I've also used eggs I purchased on Amazon. I place about one teaspoon or so in the container and then put the silicone straw on the bottle with the air pump on. If eggs get stuck on the sides of the bottle, I swish the bottle around or use a turkey baser to rinse them off. After 24 hours, the eggs haven't yet hatched. But as you can see, the brine shrimp are starting to emerge from their shells. Another 12 hours later and the brine shrimp have separated from their egg casings and are swimming around. I have found I get a large hatch by 36 hours. The empty eggs float to the top and when the air supply is turned off, the brine shrimp sink to the bottom of the bottle. This makes it easy to collect them using a siphon or a turkey baster. I usually turkey baste them and then allow the remaining brine shrimp to continue bubbling in the bottle for up to two days. I use a fine net to rinse the shrimp in tap water and sometimes I'll put them in a separate container with fresh water. Some folks don't rinse their brine shrimp but I've always felt a bit funny about putting salty water in my aquarium so I always give them a rinse. Often I feed straight from the net but in this case I'm putting them in a measuring cup to show you what they look like. Here's a nice close up so you can see their swimming motion under the microscope. To feed, I use the turkey baster or a smaller pipette to squeeze baby brine shrimp into the tank or breeder box. Brine shrimp will stay alive for a few hours in fresh water, so if you feed too much they will remain in the water column or on the bottom of the tank for a while for fish to continue eating. The jerky motion of the shrimp is quite irresistible to most fish. 
I don't care about your puny brine shrimp. Seeing the fish fill up on brine shrimp is very satisfying. Their bellies turn orange and plump. Nano fish will become conditioned for breeding on a diet rich in live food such as brine shrimp. I even squeeze some into my cherry shrimp tanks to give them a good snack. Here you can see some baby long fin peppered cori and stir by Corydoras getting a snack of this brine shrimp. They seem to love it. And here are some even smaller albino Corydora fry having a snack. My tank with neon blue-eyed rainbow fish and pygmy Corydoras gets a good snack as well. Here are some of the rainbow fish fry getting a snack too. I always give adult corridor as a snack of these brine shrimp when I hatch them out as well, although their diets are supplemented with other things such as frozen blood worms, frozen brine shrimp, and algae wafers. I plan to breed chili rasporas in the future if I can, but for now these guys are getting nice and plump off of all these brine shrimp. If I hatch too many shrimp, I will freeze them. I picked up a small ice cube tray at the dollar store, but I've also used the blister packs that come with frozen foods to make small portions of frozen brine shrimp. You can feed these cubes to fish by just dropping them into the tank and the brine shrimp will fall down and look similar to live brine shrimp. Alternatively, you can thaw the brine shrimp cubes and squirt them into the breeding boxes or tanks to feed your fish in the same way you feed live brine shrimp. Do you hatch out brine shrimp? If you do, what method do you use? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.